Hi. I've had four hours of sleep. And there's something in the car as well. All right, and here we go. 24 hours later, I'm finally well rested and well caffeinated and... Ta-da! This is what it was. It's a key punch. This is that key punch. And as it says here on the badge plate, it's the IBM Model 29. And we can tell because it has this um, interpreter interposer here, it's the Model C Model 29. And it's not a museum piece. Okay, back history here in case you don't know what the hell this machine is or what a key punch is. We all understand that at one point in the history of computers we used punch cards both for input and in some cases output of data. This machine here has no relation to the computer at all. In fact, it doesn't even have any integrated circuits in it, unless you include silicone diodes. All this does is convert keystrokes and numbers into patterns of punched holes on a card. One hopper holds a stack of unpunched cards, comes down, goes through the punch, and then goes back up here into your new stack. And then you can send that off to the computer to be read in and processed. To put it further into detail and just to explain just how popular this machine was, the 029 key punch or model 29, really it is completely interchangeable in this here um, because it both means the same thing. This was the workhorse of data input and entry systems from the 1960s all the way into the 1980s. These were very popular. You could lease them from IBM. Sure, most people did because you also leased your computers from IBM. You could rent them, even. But you could also buy them. And that people did. I mean, I could say they sold truckloads of these, but really, what, only a dozen, two dozen at a time would fit into a truck. But the point is, they sold thousands of these. They sold tens of thousands of these just to people who wanted to buy them outright. So they were and kind of still are everywhere. And everybody remembers these things. I guarantee you someone in your family tree has either worked with one of these, worked near one of these, or knows exactly what one of these is. You may remember from quite a number of years ago now, I already have a Documation punch card reader. Actually, I have a CR11 interface for my PDP-11, so I have the ability to read in punch cards. But I've never really had a way to punch the cards. And I've seen these on and off for the last 15 years, and I really wanted one. And I couldn't get my hands on one. And then finally, one showed up, and the planets aligned, and I got my hands on this one right here. So, a number of years ago, there was a computer museum. I'm going to have to add quotes there, because... It depends on who you talk to in reference to was it a full museum or not. And the curator died. And more recently, they sh everything showed up for sale. My storage unit's being cleared out. Like, I have Saturday. It's Thursday evening. Get yourself ready. Come down here. There'll be great deals. Come on and get it. And, I mean, some people got something. It was definitely no computer reset. And I saw this, but this is Houston, Texas. I live in British Columbia, Canada. So how the hell did I manage to get this thing all the way up here? And more importantly, why the hell did I pay shipping for this thing? I mean, look at it. It's disgusting. And where's the desk? There's no desk on this thing at all. There's no desk anywhere around here, in fact. Well, what happened is it turns out... Two of my friends were also looking at this and were like, gee, there's a bunch of neat stuff there I'd really like to get my hands on. But again, that's freight shipping. You'd have to palletize and do it all, and it's like over $1,000 for one person to do it. And then came the idea. Click. What if we all just combined all the items we had onto one pallet and then paid shipping on all of our items? It would heavily discount it. As a result, to get this shipped up here from Houston only cost me 300 bucks, which is a lot, but you need to understand that this is like a little over 200 pounds. Even shipping this thing from the lower mainland, like you're looking at 150, 200 bucks. So that's a great deal to get my hands on one of these. 
And I don't really care about no desk simply because, well, sure, I can make another one. Technically, there's nothing about the desk besides it's just an object you can sit at and supports the keyboard. I can make something to replace it. Anyways, thank you very much, John, for letting me um, negotiate for this. Um, there were two other Model 29 key punches. I was not able to get them. And that's just simply because we were just under the thousand pound limit for our pallet. And to get the other two units would have required a second pallet, which would have been completely on me, and it just wasn't going to happen. And also, they were not as a good condition. They were actually missing parts. This one here, we were able to hodgepodge enough together to make it a somewhat complete unit. And by the way, for everyone else who was part of this group deal, thank you very much. We all got what we needed. We are all very happy with it, even though it was all filthy. Some of it's already cleaned up and looks absolutely fantastic. But I digress, we are talking about the key punch here. And yes, I say it's complete, but we're missing pieces here, aren't we? No, they're just standing over there. Um, so, one quirk about this. When I first saw the unit, it actually had the cover piece here for the IBM 129 key punch and the keyboard for a 129 key punch. Now, serious... There's a, it's a good thing I called and asked and inquired about this a little bit more because I would have been seriously screwed if I had bought it as is. The keyboard is not compatible with this at all. This here has no logic in it. The 129 has the ability to store in its own solid state memory um, keystrokes and the entire contents of a card, possibly even multiple cards. I haven't done the full homework on it. Anyways, a lot more logic, completely incompatible. Interestingly, he did not have the proper keyboard for this one here. He had the keyboard for the Model B, or possibly even a Model A. Here, let me go take a look at that. Enough looking at this thing here over here. So this is the keyboard for it here. And that I can tell, uh, the Model A and the Model B keyboards look visually identical. Unless you have, like, the small numeric keypad version, which I don't have, thankfully. The Model C version, again, almost entirely the same. But you have a switch that hides over here, which turns on off the punch print interpreter. And I don't have that. I don't know if that means the wiring for it is not in here, or if it is up to here, and I'm just kind of missing this cover plate here in the switch. I don't know. I'll have to ask around and get a couple of questions. Bad comes to worse, I'll just add a switch inside the punch, and that way that's how I can switch around. Or I could probably just see if I can negotiate a trade for the entire keyboard. I don't know. But this one here is in good shape. The SMS ends are all in there. Like the underside of this thing doesn't look bad. There's no rust, there's no corrosion. There's no nastiness thing on this thing at all. Uh, really the worst thing that was in here, and I'm gonna quickly switch over here to the B-roll because this was the drum before I touched it. Uh, I quickly threw the program drum into a mix of water and vinegar and all that corrosion was gone. The, the drum looks absolutely immaculate now. That was the worst thing on here, so that's cleaned up. Uh, like I said, we do have the proper covers for everything here, sort of. I'll explain in a moment. Uh, interestingly, it seems the plastic protective cover for the interposer has broken standoffs. Okay, I'll figure out how to work with that. But that's there, and so is its cover. And I have this one here, which we had pulled off one of the other key punches, but I wasn't thinking about, um, does this fit onto here? And the answer is no. As you can see, it's supposed to go right here. There's a cutout on the Model C cover that isn't on here. And I mean, I could make that cut there and put that in there, but that would be absolute sacrilege. Again, while I'm asking about this here, I'm going to ask, does anyone have a cover piece for a Model C that they'd be willing to trade? This one here is in great condition. By the way, whoever worked on this thing last has already defoamed it. So there's no nasty foam in this thing at all. Speaking of nastiness, here, let's take the cover off this thing and I'll better explain what's happened inside. Now, whoever decommissioned this thing was very, very considerate. And if you know who you are, thank you very much. Like... You were very nice. You saved everything. Sure, you took the desk away, but like all the gaskets are here. All the gaskets are in great shape. Like any parts that were damaged or broken, like there's a broken spot weld here for a broken hinge piece. I have like I have this piece of the hinge, but I also have that pin. 
I took out the chip bucket, which is this thing here, and it has all the missing fasteners. It has, there's the missing piece of the hinge right there. So that's an easy spot well back on. Like even when they took out all of the wiring harnesses like this, and I had to do that again anyways to separate the punch assembly from the base so I could load it into the car. But even these like rubbery plastically retainers, which just kind of, I got nothing here I can show you with, but they're used instead of zip ties or anything to hold it together into the frame. Um, they're all here, like everything is in here. So thank you, thank you very much. And sure, like it pivots, it's disgustingly filthy with that like Texas dirt, but I guess you could say it's very fair. Uh, by the way, Fair Enterprises, you did a good job of maintaining this thing here. It's, it's like, it's got this dirt on it, but it's not mousy. Even like the, the fluff that is in here, that's pink fluff from punch cards. Like even the plastic on this is like nice and soft. There's no sign anywhere here of mouse incursion. There's no signs of any signs of rust on this thing. It never got wet. And that was one thing people argued saying and that some of the stuff in the storage unit was all water damaged. This is not water damaged. No, none of us receive anything water damaged. Just very, very filthy. Um, but yeah, this is like, this isn't corroded. This is just dirty. This is all very dirty. It'll have to all be heavily scrubbed. Like none of that seized. And if I go over here even, like I can go down here. Like the belts are not great, but if I turn them, that turns, and if I can reach in here, check that out, like, nothing seized. Okay, remember what I said there about nothing being seized? Yeah, I take that back. This little lever here, which engages and disengages the uh, reading assembly for the program drum, yeah, that seems to be seized. That, oh. Okay, you know what, I take that back again. It's tight, but it's not seized. Like, I'm seeing components all over this thing that are free moving. Nothing is seized in here. Um, it just needs to be heavily cleaned and heavily lubricated. Um, it's all, uh, this will have to be cleaned as well. I'm sure someone's gonna point out in the comments that I have a broken ribbon here, and that may seem like a case of, well, might as well just stitch it up and call it good. But here's the fun thing. Once I take this retainer off, this ribbon, just like with Model 33 teletype machines, you can still buy new ribbons. Especially for this machine, which is 60 years old. Amazing. But other than that, like, I just have a very, very, very extensive tidy to do here. Like, there's no components that I have to over go and replace. Even the power switch is here. Power switch sounds absolutely fantastic. Like, yeah, like, looks awful. And it's small, which I don't mind. But yeah, we're uh, we're good. Yeah, even the weights here. I didn't I didn't even realize until now the card weight is in there, and it's all full of dust. But again, we'll just blow it out. We'll buff it out. We'll wash it, and it'll be all good to go. Oh yeah, and if you were wondering yourself where the heck the uh, the electronics were on the back of the thing when we went over there, here it is right now. I've actually pulled the relay cabinet out because it's all been dewired and all unplugged. We don't have any options, sure, whatever, but the SMS paddle boards are in here, all the relays are in here, and all the point-to-point -point wiring is in here too. Now, there are a couple fixes that will need to be done. Um, these aren't actually soldered terminals in here, they're just little plugs. So these have pulled out of somewhere. I'm going to have to figure out where they've unplugged from, and I think there's at least one damaged cable hiding here somewhere. Where were you? There you are. You were just hiding right down there in plain sight. Yeah, I just got tugged on, but again, that's a pretty easy one there. Just pull that back, solder it, heat shrink. It's done. It's good to go. But this here, I guarantee you, all of these electrical contacts are going to have to be clean. So, better buy a can of deoxit. And speaking of what other work there is to do on this here, if you want to get yourself a good idea of now what I'm up against, just with electrical context and electrical faults on their own, I recommend you watch the video series from Curious Mark where he got his um, undeniably cleaner 29 Model C key punch working. 
and that gives you a vague idea there. Now, I'm going to have to either reach out to him, or I'm going to have to reach out to Alcaso, or really anyone who I could consider having this documentation. I can find the wiring diagrams for the Model A and the Model B, but like I mentioned, the Model C has the interposer here, and I have to ask if anybody has those wiring diagrams, because BitSavers does not have them for some reason, which is really, really odd. But maybe I'll be able to make videos on this while I am working on this over the course of the winter, but I am hoping to have this in a functioning state ready to demonstrate by the new year. I hope you enjoyed this. I really hope you like this here, and if you like seeing videos like this, just mention it down in the comments. And until next time, have a good one.